People often ask me what the difference is between the different drive systems on boats and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Well, I'm at boat.co.uk yard up in Essex and there's three boats here side by side with the different drive systems on. So I'm going to give you a quick talk through of what they're all about. And I'm going to start here because this is a conventional shaft drive boat. Now what you have with this is the engines are up a little bit more towards the center. They're cantered down slightly. They have a gearbox on the back of them. And then behind that is a shaft. The shaft goes through the hull, through what's called a stern gland that stops obviously the water going back through the other way. And then you have this stainless steel shaft that comes down. You've got the P bracket. That's this fellow that hangs down that supports the shaft. The propeller is on the end. That's the spinny thing. And then you have rudders behind to steer the boat. Now the big advantage with this is just how incredibly simple it all is. You just got engine, that's inside, gearbox, that's inside. And on the outside of the boat is just this stainless steel. The P bracket is bronze, the propellers are normally bronze, the rudders are bronze. Very tough, very easy to maintain and a very sturdy system. This is probably the oldest system of driving this kind of boat. You'll find boats built in the 50s that have this system and they're still going strong. It's a very serious system. It'll handle a lot of power and, um, and it works very well. Now, what are the disadvantages of this? Well, packaging is one because if you have the shaft there, then the engine invariably is up there. It's a long way forward in the boat and so it can encroach on the accommodation. It depends on the style of the boat because if it's bigger, the accommodation may well be above it. There is a variation which is called V-Drive, which is exactly the same underneath the boat. However, then it goes through V-Box and the engine then is above here. So that puts the engines further back. Um, what else is there? There's a lot of drag with this system. So you've got the prop shaft itself, you've got that P-bracket, you've got the rudder all being dragged through the water. So that's reducing efficiency, so using more fuel and um, also dropping the speed back a little bit. Because the propellers are fixed, they only point in one direction, which is straight back. All the steering is done by the rudders, so it's a little bit less dynamic. It doesn't matter on a cruising boat, but on a sports boat, they don't handle with quite the same alacrity. So that's another thing with them. But a very good system, very well proven, very easy to maintain. Wherever you are in the world, there's somebody that can look after this stuff. And so that's why these are very popular. What else can we find to show you? Well, I'm going to show you an outdrive next, also known as a stern drive also known as inboard outboard and that is these fellows here let's come right round so we can see them properly these are volvo pentas and uh, what you have here now is the engines are right at the back of the boat and then the drive comes out of the back so the engines are just on the other side of that bulkhead these are effectively the gearbox so the gear changing and everything that happens in here and then the drive comes out goes down and comes out here. These are what's called duoprops. They don't all have duoprops. Well, those normally do. Some just have a single propeller. With a duoprop, these counter-rotate, so they go in opposite directions. And the advantage with that is to give a bit more grip and efficiency. The advantages with this is the fact there's less drag, because this is almost like a rudder without any of the rest of that stuff. Um, so they tend to be very efficient. They tend to give good performance. You can also trim these. That's what these rams here are for. That means these will trim in and out and that means you can affect the trim of the boat. So on fast boats, you can bring the bow up a bit when you're going fast. That's useful. Also, these will power all the way up so that you can normally beach them. Not always, but normally, these will go far enough up that you could put the boat on a beach. Obviously, with a shaft drive boat, you couldn't. That's another advantage to them. So they're efficient. The packaging is very good because the engines are right at the back. So great, again, for sports boats. Um, and they work very well. They've been out for a long time. You'll find out drives on boats dating back, I think, to the 60s. Um, the very first Princess boat was a Project 31, and that was on out drives, and that came out, I think, in 1965. So again, pretty well proven. So what are the downsides to these? Well, there's a lot going on on the outside of the boat. All of this is aluminium. You've got these rams here. The whole thing steers as well. You've got these rubber bellows they're called up here that's so that as the thing tilts and turns you're keeping that water protected you've got these little bellows on here as well all this stuff needs to be serviced so every other year you've got to have these dryers off you've got to change these bellows because they go rigid over time and then if they split the water gets inside causes huge amounts of damage these rams they can wear out over time so there's more maintenance with these but it's not horrific as i say it's every other year probably once a year you change the oil and every other year you take the drives off and you do all that kind of stuff. There are a couple more advantages to mention 
One is that the handling of these is very good because when you steer the boat, this whole thing turns and not only does it act as a rudder, but the actual thrust, you can imagine as this turns, the thrust is now coming this way. And so it really pushes the boat about. So in a sports boat, you get much faster handling. That's pretty good. And there's another feature with these as well, which is if you are going along at 30 knots and you hit maybe, I don't know, a huge plank of wood in the water, as it comes down the boat, these are designed to tilt up. So they will actually go up out of the way and then come back down again. So they're quite good from that point of view as well. So in essence, these are more efficient, they're better packaging, they're faster, but you've got more maintenance going on with these. And then the last thing perhaps to mention as a disadvantage is it puts the weight of the engines right at the very back of the boat. It's not quite as well balanced as a shaft drive boat where the engines are further forward. You can imagine from a centre of gravity point of view, put the engines in the middle and it balances the boat nicely, put the engines right at the back, not quite as good. But these, very good for sports boats. My boat has a single one of these. You can have these as single or twin, as indeed you can with the shafts. So um, a good system. But uh, as everything with boats, they're all a compromise. And the compromise of this is there's a bit more servicing work going on. There's a bit more to go wrong. Some people swear by them. I personally quite like them. Some people swear at them. <laughs> they're known as the devil's egg whisks because of the problems that you can sometimes have with them. But um, generally speaking, they're well proven and they're a good system. Let's go and have a look at IPS. So we'll go over here. More out drives over here. Again, these are Volvo Penta with the duo props. But this boat here is a Princess V48, and this is on IPS pod drive. So let's come right to the back. Now these initially look a little bit like out drives, but they're not. These face forward. The front of the boat is down that way, and the back of the boat is here. Now, one of the things I didn't mention about out drives and other limitation is the horsepower. You used to be only get up to about 230 horsepower through out drives. These days, you're up to 440 horsepower on diesels. Petrols invariably do more horsepower because they have less torque. But if we talk about diesels, 440 is about the max. With these, I think you're up to, I think, 1,000 horsepower now they can put through these. Now, the advantage with these, you can only have them in twins. But the big advantage is the maneuverability because these are computer controlled. They swivel. And that means that you can have a joystick, you push the joystick to the side, it can swivel these two independently of each other and control the thrust and make the boat do exactly what you want. And that was the big selling point of these. Having said that, they have now introduced joystick control and outdrive, so you can do a similar thing with outdrives. But these are better from a maneuverability point of view because the props are further forward on the boat, they've got a bit more leverage. So they're very good from that point of view. The forward-facing props, incidentally, the idea of these is to make them more efficient because they operate in completely clean water. Because the boat is travelling in that direction, the water hitting them is not dispersed by the casing of the outdrive or the shaft as it is with the other configurations. These are biting into completely clean water and they are reckoned to be about the most efficient. So that's the upsides. Downsides on these, well, firstly, you can't tilt them. So um, you couldn't put this boat on the ground, for example, as you could with an outdrive boat. Some people are concerned that if you hit something hard in the water, you could rip one of these off and cause all sorts of damage. That was certainly a concern when these came out. Having said that, these have been out now, um, I think they came out in 2005, so 15 years. Very, very rare you hear of damage. And to be fair, you can damage any boat if you hit something hard enough. Shaft drive boat, I've heard of shafts being ripped out and all kinds of things. So, you know, the basic advice is <laughs> don't hit anything in the water. Be careful how you use the boat. But that certainly is a slight concern. Having said that, I believe they have a system so that if one of these did get pushed off, it's designed to close and seal the system so you don't end up with a flooding situation. One thing you do find with these is they are very complex. So you really need these to be serviced by somebody who really knows what they're doing. And in some parts of the world, perhaps they're not quite as ready for these as other places. So you need to be perhaps a little more aware. Certainly all the major boating areas, no problem at all dealing with this kind of stuff. They're very established. But that's the thing with them. You are potentially into more cost from a maintenance point of view and more complication. A lot of computer control going on with these sorts of things uh, and a lot of mechanics. But as I say, from a maneuverability point of view, they're excellent. They will handle more power than an outdrive will, so you can put these on bigger boats on an outdrive. With an outdrive, really, you're limited to about probably 45, 50 feet. These, you'll find these. In fact, they can do these up to quad drives, so you'll find these on, you know, 60, 70 foot boats sometimes. 
These are also good from a packaging point of view because again they put the engines further back in the boat, not quite as far back as an outdrive boat, but certainly they free up more space inside and that's another reason why they're popular. But these have really taken off, they are very popular. Now the question you're going to ask next is which is best? And the answer to that is well that depends, it really depends on what you want because as I mentioned each has its advantage and disadvantage and each factor of that will be more or less important to you. But hopefully that's giving you a bit of an overview and, and a bit more information. I'm just going to show you since it's here actually there is one more drive configuration, we're cheating slightly because it's not inboard, but this is an outboard. So that's an outboard engine and this is one complete self-contained unit. These are great on small boats because it frees up the whole of the boat for your accommodation. All your mechanics are right here on the back and it's a completely self-contained unit so it's easy to replace, it's easy to repair, it tilts up like an outdrive so you can beach this boat no problem at all. Downsides, well they can be a bit noisier sometimes although the modern ones are actually very very quiet. Um, it puts the weight of the engine quite high up and a long way back compared to an inboard which puts it down and further forward. So again there's compromises to them but these, particularly on small boats, say up to about 20, 25 foot, are very good. And in fact, now we're seeing these on bigger and bigger boats. The engines are getting more efficient. They're getting quieter. They're getting more popular. In America in particular, it's not uncommon to find maybe four or more of these on 50 and 60 foot boats. Really powerful engines. You're seeing 300, 350, even 400 horsepower now. So these are still very, very popular and certainly have a big market and I think we'll see these more in Europe as well particularly as people start to go more towards petrol engines which the vast majority of these are. So there you go it's a very quick overview but hopefully it's given you a few pointers as to what's going on underneath. I do talk about this stuff quite a lot so it's an interesting opportunity to uh, to show you and also while we're here I'm going to show you boats.co.uk's yard because this is a proper Aladdin's cave. I'm up here doing some filming today but look at the stuff that they've got here. It's just huge. If you're boat shopping, <laughs> there are worse places to go. Let's have a walk over here. What have I been filming today? This V48 I filmed. I filmed this Beneteau, this Doral. There's a Sunseeker up here, 1996 Sunseeker. Bit of a classic. There it is, Manhattan 48. That's quite a cool boat. There's a Broom, there's a Beneteau. And you'll see some of these if they're not on the channel already coming online. Look at this. This is a Fairline Sedan 32. Can't see it outside very well because the sun's in the wrong place, but let's go around here. There we go. Look at that. Very much part of Fairline's routes. It's a Fairline Squadron 43 next to it. A lot, a lot of stuff here. Anyway, there we go. I'm going to get back to filming some boats for you guys now, but hopefully that's been interesting. We'll catch you on another one very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.